So today, we're going to be taking a look at the Savage He-Man Orco 2-Pack from Masterverse, so stay tuned. <laughs> So this is Savage He-Man and Orko, based on the way they appeared in the Revelation series. These figures come from the Masterverse line, and uh, I'm pretty excited to actually get in, into the review of these figures because I have a lot to say, so let's not waste any more time, let's get into the packaging. Okay, so for the packaging, now this does not want to stay closed on the top, so that's why it's kind of pushed up. But, um, and you can see this is a lot bigger than the yeah, standard single figure pack, then because, you know, I mean, there's two figures in here, so that's one reason, but... You know, a lot of the deluxe figures come in this, you know, bigger box. So when I give you some of those, you'll see some of those too. But as you can see, it says Netflix and original series in the corner there, like the other ones. It says also includes Orko, made by Mattel, Masters of the Universe Revelation, Savage He-Man. And uh, on the bottom, is not a whole lot down there. On one side, you got the awesome artwork of Savage He-Man and Orko, which is kind of hard for me to show because this box is really long, as you can see, but still really cool. Now, on, on the other side, it just says Savage He-Man. The most powerful primate in the universe. So, a little different than the most powerful man in the universe. There's a reason for that, so I'll explain here in a minute. But you can see it's got a bio, if you want to read that, pause it now. Also, more figures there at the bottom are available, which I have a few of those. I have, I've already reviewed this one. I have uh, Stereo I got Faker, and I'm reviewing this one. So, really, the only accessory Orco comes with is his flat stand here. As you can see, it's kind of it's made out of a clear translucent plastic, and it's got a hinge at the top there and at the the bottom, as you can see, so you can hinge it in different ways. It swivels, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's part, it looks like it's supposed to be like air, but it uh, the way this plastic is sculpted, it actually looks more like a, like it's crystallized, you know, it's like a crystal or something. So it's a little strange, but you know, it, you, you can plug it into it goes bottom right there, which is a little difficult because that peg wants to the the turn, as you can see. So if I can ever get it back in there, that's why I don't try to take this out very much. There we go. So you can see now it's in there. And now you have Orco, you know, floating. As you see, uh, well, I have to hold him up. But as you see, now you have Orco in a floating pose. So Savage He-Man comes with quite a bit of accessories. First is two, and he has two sets of hands. The first set here is these really primal looking hands. You can see that's kind of got the fingers in it in a primal like position there as best I can explain it but as you can see they um have a lot of painted like dirt detail on them and stuff because you know, it's supposed to be like a primal he-man so you know he probably doesn't have very good hygiene so that's probably why he's pretty dirty as you see there's that like, brown in the hinge there and the thing which you know you can put these on uh savage he-man pretty easy so you take and just peg them in like you would any other you know uh masterverse figure so which is this one's a little stiff trying to get them in there, as you can see. There we go. So now you have, you know, him like in a kind of a primal rage, I guess, kind of hands, you could, I guess you could call it. So now the second set of hands that I've already put on the figure here are these gripping hands, which these gripping hands are uh, the same gripping hands that come with the standard He-Man, which I've already reviewed. But as you can see, uh, there's uh, painted a little bit different than He-Man's hands, you know, they're more dirty than, you know, the standard He-Man hands, but you know, he's coming handy for the other, the other other accessories that he comes with. So his first weapon is, you know, the power sword here, as you can see. Now, um, in the show, he never did actually wield this in this form, so I don't know why they actually uh, gave him this, but it's the same sword that came with him, as so I won't have to go into detail, same paint color and everything like that. But um, he can hold this in his, uh, one of his gripping hands there, as you can see. Like I said, he never did actually hold this in this form, so... Um, what you could do with this, since you know I got two other figures that have the same sword, you can take and give this sword to you know your King Gray Skull because he didn't actually come with a whole power sword; he came with a two that was split in half. But you can put this in his hand. Now you have a King Gray Skull with a proper power sword, which I don't know if I would display him with this because I'll probably display him with the Preternia half, and I can usually display Scareglow with the Subternia half. So I probably won't display him this way, but that's a pretty cool option you can do if, if that's what you choose to do with your King Gray Skull. Now his next weapon, which is really cool, is this Battle Axe. As you can see now in the in in the show when he was in the Savage He-Man form, he did actually use this against Skelly God, so this makes a little more sense. But as you can see, it's got pretty good, you know, like a dry, uh, like a silvery paint wash on there, making it kind of a warning use. There's a lot of dents and dings in it, you know, because it's, it's a used axe, so 
as you can see, it's got uh, not very much paint detail on the handle except for where, you know, the rip itself is. I just kind of got like a gold color on it, and there's ball there at the bottom. Which, you know, he can hold on to this as well, which, uh, as you can see, there he is holding the, the battle axe, which looks really cool, actually. And what you also could do, if you so choose to do with your standard He-Man figure, you can take, which, you know, on the wrong way, so you, get, you can take and put this in your He-Man figure's hand, which, you know, this is like a uh, reference to the original figure, you know, in the original mini-comics, you know, where the battle axe was He-Man's primary weapon, not the sword of power, you know, which, they didn't actually include a battle axe with this He-Man, so it's kind of a little bit of a missed opportunity, but you can put this with your standard He-Man if that's what you choose to do. Now, my favorite weapon right here, which you may be wondering why this is my favorite weapon, but uh, this, you know, this spear right here, yeah, uh, this dates back all the way to the very first mini comic where, you know, Savage He-Man was actually first introduced, which when we go over the details figure, I'll explain that a little bit more. But, um, as you can see, it's got a, like a stone, uh, spearhead on it there, as you can see. It's got a lot of detail. It looks like an actual stone on there, which is actually pretty cool. It's got like a, like a kind of a gray paint job on it, a little bit of dark paint on there, it looks like. The paint's a little bit sloppy right there on mine, but you see, it's got some string around the top there holding the probably holding the spear, the head to the stick. And you see the, the handle itself has got a nice wood grain kind of texture to it and it's got a brown paint job as you see. That's the way it goes all the way down. Which he can hold this. So he, can, he actually gets a really good grip on it. And this will probably be the way I'll display this He-Man because yeah, this, just, this just flows. You know, it looks really, really good actually. So for articulation, we will start with Savage He-Man first. Now, Savage He-Man's articulation is not different than uh, than the other He-Man or any other figure. He's got a ball joint at the head, a hinge and swivel at the shoulder, double hinge at the elbow, and a swivel there at the tricep, a hinge and swivel at the wrist, you know, good uh, ab articulation, swivel at the, at the waist, you know, hinge and swivel at the thigh there, a double hinge there at the knee, and a swivel at the uh, where the boot cut should be, and a you know, pretty good ankle articulation and ankle pivot. So now for Orko's articulation, Orko has a uh, more limited articulation. He can, he's got a ball joint at the head there, so he gets pretty good movement. Actually, really good head movement there. As you can see, he's got a hinge at the arm, and he can rotate around on the the stand there. So that's pretty much it for articulation. So for scope design and code, we'll start with Orko first. So um, as you can see, you know, he still pretty much looks like standard Orko, but this is Orko after the whole uh, magic fallout, you know, where magic was dying out and He-Man and Skeletor were both seemingly gone, and uh, as you can see, he still kind of got the same Orko hat there, as you can see, with some, a lot of, uh, like, beads hanging off around there and straps all around it. And it's kind of got, like, a tan color instead of red. He's got the purple scarf around him, which is a uh, table for Orko, but this is a very big scarf, as you can see. And he's also got the red shirt on, although, uh, there's no O on the shirt, so that's a missing detail, which I don't think he had in the show, so. He's also got, you know, his ears hanging out, which is also a signature for Orko. He doesn't really have a face, either. He's just got some eyes there, as you can see, and they're kind of like a yellowish color, as you can see, with a yellow sclera. And uh, his arms are pretty skinny, and they're all blue, as you can see. He looks like, you know, he's uh, not in very good shape. You know, he's, since, you know, magic's dying out, he's, you know, pretty much, you know, dying, so... As you can see, the scarf goes around the back there and curls up. And, uh, so that's pretty much for, well, as you can see, the shirt is tattered on the bottom. I forgot to mention that. But as you can see, the detail actually goes underneath the shirt, too. So that's actually pretty cool, the texture. So that's pretty much it for Orko. Now, for the scope design and color of Savage He-Man, you know, before we get into that, you know, now this is based on the way he appeared in the Revelation series where he called on the power of, of, of Grayskull without the power sword. And he kind of turned into this, you know, kind of, raw version of He-Man, you know, where he's more primitive and really, you know, has no thinking skills, you know, he's just like a primitive monster, basically. But, um, but that's not exactly, you know, the first version, you know, where, where this actually came from. Now, they did make a figure of this in the classics line called Ular, unfortunately, I don't have that figure. But, um, now this version this of He-Man actually dates back all the way to the very first mini-comic, you know, and some, you know, big fans like myself already know this, but if you don't, you know, like I say, he dates back all the way to the very first mini comic, and uh, where He-Man was depicted more as a barbaric-like character, and uh, 
Yeah, this this was before the Prince Adam version of the story, so no Prince Adam at that time. And uh, he was chosen by the goddess to wear this special armor and uh, and hold, you know, the sword of grace or the one half of the sword of grace skull. And he used the battle axe as his primary weapon. So uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I you know immediately knew this when they show this in the show. Now this figure, you know, is a little different than he was in the show because he uses the same body as the standard He Man because. In the show, when he transformed into the Savage He-Man, he was huge. He was like a, you know, hulking monster. So this is a little, little underscaled, but um, but I really don't mind. It's still pretty cool. As you see, his hair there is really shaggy, you know, and not uh, really well kept. You know, he's kind of savage, so that's why his hair is really unkempt. But uh, as you see, the way his hair, the hair is hard. You know, it won't, uh, really can't get him to looking up pose. So he's always kind of looking down. Pose, as you can see, and you see it. Uh, I don't think that's the same head as He Man. I don't, it kind of looks like it, but I really can't tell. But he's got the piercing blue eyes, as you can see there. Now, for you know, uh, going over his body, you know, he's practically naked, he's not wearing very much clothes except for his one cloth. So, as you can see, this, I don't have to go over the body as much because I done went over this with He Man, he's, he's just not wearing all the other stuff, he doesn't have the wrist bracers. On his arm, he uh, he got the harness and stuff. And you can see his, his body is pretty dirty, too, as you, as you can see. And he's kind of like a savage animal. And uh, his legs are the, the same legs, upper legs as the uh, standard He Man, but just dirty. Now he has the shins without the boots, and he also doesn't have shoes, making him more savage, as you can see. He's got pretty dirty feet there, too. There's actually some details on the bottom of his feet there, too. So it's comparison time. Here is this, you know, new version of Orko compared to his vintage counterpart there. Which these figures are both the same size. You know, the original Orko figure is obviously oversized from what he actually was in the in the cartoon series. But um but I think that this uh I, I don't know if Orko was actually this big in Revelation, I can't remember, but yeah, you know, this figure does seem to be kinda oversized. I could be wrong on that, but you know, from what I, from my to my knowledge right now he's kinda oversized than what he was in the show. But, um, as you can see, you know, a very similar look, but just, you know, a little bit different. So here's this new Savage He-Man compared to the Vintage He-Man figure. Which you may be wondering why I'm doing this, but, you know, the reason is because this Vintage He-Man figure is actually based on, you know, this version of He-Man from the mini comics. It actually wasn't based on the Prince Adam version, because, you know, that hadn't been, you know, minted yet. But, um, as you can see, you know, it's a pretty cool comparison there. So here's, here's Savage He-Man compared to... The normal standard He-Man from Revelation, as you can see, it's a pretty, you know, big difference, as, as you can see here. And um, from what I can tell here, uh, Savage He-Man actually stands a little bit taller than He-Man, which is kind of odd since, you know, He-Man's actually wearing shoes and Savage He-Man is not, so that's a little uh, strange there. There's usually, you know, shoes give you a little bit added height, so that's a little strange. But as you can see, you know, pretty uh, drastic difference between these two. So here he is compared to King Grayskull, also from Revelation. And like as I said earlier, you can reuse that sword for King Grayskull if that's what you choose to do, which I don't think I'll probably do that because uh, I have another idea of display a method with the, you know, split swords. But, you know, that's a pretty uh, cool way to display that. But um, as you can see, a pretty big difference here. And Savage He-Man is also taller than King Grayskull. And like I said, with He-Man, King Grayskull is also wearing shoes. So that's a little bit of a, a little weird there. And last but not least, here's Savage He-Man compared to Skelly God, who he had the epic battle with in the, in the show, which is pretty cool. Now, Skelly God is also kind of a little bit undersized than what he was in the show. He was a lot bigger. Uh, he was really big as, as, as Skelly God, so he's a little undersized here, kind of like uh, Savage He-Man there, but still really cool. You can get some uh, really you know, good battle poses with these two if you uh, so choose to do that, because can recreate some of the epic battle scenes they had in the show. So what do I think of these figures overall? Yeah, I, I really enjoy this two-pack. It's one of my, probably one of my favorites I actually own. Now, I have a few little uh, nitpicks there, like the um, hair being uh, really hard on Savage He-Man. You can't get him in a proper looking up pose because that hair is so hard, it won't, it won't, it don't have any kind of flexibility whatsoever. But, um, like I said, it's just a little minor nitpick, though. But I, mean, I really do enjoy this figure. And like I said, the, uh, the cool spear there too is a really cool uh, nod to the uh, original mini comic. And uh, now Orko is 
a little more lacking, you know, than Savage He-Man and like way in as accessories go and stuff, but still pretty cool. It's actually the second Orko figure actually. I don't have very many of them. You know, the only one, other one I have is actually the Vintage one. So I now I have another Orko, so that's pretty nice. And uh, so if you want to see more Masterverse, you can give me a thumbs up. That helped me a lot. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Till next time.